Battlefield, Crime, and Politics in the 1920s, author Jim Ridings takes readers inside Illinois Capitol during the time when Chicago gangsters thrived and politicians let them do so. And here he is uh, to talk with us. And this is the book. Uh, you know, it's, it's a quick read. It's an interesting read. And it talks about, we've heard so much about Capone and the other famous gangsters. How is this one different? Uh, this is different, Bob, because uh, this uh, focuses uh, more on the politicians of the time. There's been plenty of books about the gangsters and Al Capone, but uh, they don't go into uh, the, the uh, politicians that allowed these gangsters to become powerful. Well, as you mentioned, the fact uh, remained that uh, the politicians were almost enablers for the gangsters. That's sort of putting it mildly. Uh, they, they were paid by the gangsters. Uh, Al Capone uh, gave uh, uh, fifty thousand dollars to big bill thompson's uh, campaign to elect him mayor of chicago and he also uh... sent a bunch of men to the polls to see that people voted the way they were supposed to vote was there nothing that the public could do to foster a uh... cleanup of government at that time not any more than the public can do today uh... there doesn't seem to be a, a very willingness to to do that on the part of the public and and as far as the uh, politicians are concerned uh... they're getting too much money to, uh, to, to want to do anything about that. And of course it went back and forth. Yes. You mentioned Paul Powell as one uh, that I remember, um, you know, in our lifetime, uh, who, the, the famous shoe boxes that they found in his home. Yeah, he uh, spent like 40 years in the legislature, but the only thing he's going to be remembered for is after he died, uh, they found shoe boxes in his house uh, with about $750,000 in uh, in cash and, and a lot of checks made out to the Secretary of State for license plates. <laughs> Man, this was going on right in Springfield, and so you, you tie this all together uh, throughout the history of Illinois. Yes. Mm -hmm. Has there, how long has this existed, and has there ever been a time when we didn't see this? No, no. Uh, going back to the 1860s and 70s before the Chicago fire, uh, Chicago was a, a, a corrupt town that was. Uh, uh, the politicians were on the on the payroll of the, the gambling houses and 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 so on. Um, we, we had a unique situation in the 1920s. You had Big Bill Thompson, who was on the payroll of Al Capone, and he openly campaigned on the theme that he was not going to enforce prohibition. In fact, he was going to let the the people uh, uh, the the speakeasy stay open. Right, right. He also had a governor, Len Small, who uh, sold pardons by the hundreds to Capone and other people. Mm. Um, he went, uh, he, before he was governor, he was a state treasurer, and he embezzled about $2 million from the state treasury. Well, I'll tell you, it, this, it's a fascinating book. As I said, it's a quick, fun read, so uh, you might want to go pick this up. It's called um, Chicago to Springfield, Crime and Politics in the 1920s, and it's on shelves right now. So, Jim, thanks so much for coming in. And you can learn more about this. Log on to our WGNTV.com slash midday website for more information. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Bob.